Hey, how you doing? Pat and Jen here. We're on Ford Island in Hawaii right now, taking a tour of the uh, old Navy base back from World War II, and thought it would be a good time to do an introduction to this series of videos. Stick around, stay tuned. I think you're going to see a lot of cool things you like. Say hi, Jen. Hi, Jen. Hi, Jen. <laughs> Mr. Vice President, Mr. Speaker, members of the Senate, of the House of Representatives, yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. The United States was at peace with that nation and at the solicitation of Japan was still in conversation with its government and its emperor looking toward the maintenance of peace in the Pacific. Indeed, one hour after Japanese air squadrons had commenced bombing in the American island of Oahu, the Japanese ambassador to the United States and his colleague delivered to our Secretary of State a formal reply to a recent American message. And while this reply stated that it seemed useless to continue the existing diplomatic negotiations, it contained no threat or hint of war or of armed attack. It will be recorded that the distance of Hawaii from Japan makes it obvious that the attack was deliberately planned many days or even weeks ago. During the intervening time, the Japanese government has deliberately sought to deceive the United States by false statements and expressions of hope for continued peace. The attack yesterday on the Hawaiian Islands has caused severe damage to American naval and military forces. I regret to tell you that very many American lives have been lost. In addition, American ships have been reported torpedoed on the high seas between San Francisco and Honolulu. Yesterday, the Japanese government also launched an attack against Malaya. Last night, Japanese forces attacked Hong Kong. Last night, Japanese forces attacked Guam. Last night, Japanese forces attacked the Philippine Islands. Last night, the Japanese attacked Wake Island. And this morning, the Japanese attacked Midway Island. Japan has therefore undertaken a surprise offensive extending throughout the Pacific area. The facts of yesterday and today speak for themselves. The people of the United States have already formed their opinions and well understand the implications to the very life and safety of our nation. As Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy, I have directed that all measures be taken for our defense. But always will our whole nation remember the character of the onslaught against us.
When I was deployed, this is the type of helicopter we used to carry on board ship. On the uh, United States ship John F. Kennedy, CV-67, the H-3. I think it was called a Sea King. I'll have to double check that. Hey, how about that? I was right. Hey, it's been over 30 some odd years. Give me a little bit of credit here to forget some things. <laughs> And then, a co-worker and I used a helicopter like this to uh, put a whole bunch of AC units on board the uh, factory where we work. And then, right here, this style of helicopter is the only helicopter flight I've ever been on. It's an H-46, or CH-46E, this particular model. But this is what they flew me off the ship at the end of my last cruise because we were coming in late. And we had plane tickets, so they let a whole bunch of us uh, fly off. And I happen to be sitting on this exact side of the aircraft in approximately this area because when I looked out the uh, viewport here, I could see the carrier deck down below. Unfortunately, I don't have pictures of that. You know, I need to make a correction. I was actually on the starboard side of the aircraft now that I think about it because when I looked to my left, I could see the rear where we flew most of the way into Norfolk with all of our sea bags piled up right there and the door actually open. Which kind of made me nervous. I thought our sea bags were gonna fall out, but they didn't. And then this big monster here used to be one of a few different aircraft that would bring supplies and most importantly, mail on board. This is the uh, CH-53 helicopter. A lot of times we'd see this bad boy land on our deck, we'd know we'd be getting mail call. Hot dogs and fries, 32 bucks. Everything's 30 bucks or more here in Hawaii. USS Bowfin is credited with sinking 16 Japanese vessels with a total tonnage of 67,882 tons. On one of their more noteworthy patrols in November of 43, Bowfin sank 12 vessels, but only five of which were officially credited to the boat. Come on, Rosie. <laughs> I don't know if I can do it with this. Welcome to the USS Missouri, where the documents of the Japanese surrender were signed.
50 Allied warships and she had over a thousand aircrafts on standby. Now the same set of ladders you folks just walked up were actually the same ladders that the Japanese delegation on your right hand side in the photograph walked up roughly placed themselves in this area right in front of me. So everyone is in place folks. The ceremony started at 9.02 a.m. with a brief opening speech by General MacArthur himself. Now during his speech, number 27 in the photograph, that is Mr. Toshikazu Kase, who was the English translator for the Japanese delegation. He actually received MacArthur's speech with great respect. Instead of talking about vengeance, MacArthur talked about freedom, justice, and tolerance. Visiting the USS Arizona Memorial is a surreal experience. I would gotten chills as soon as I walked on knowing I was above the grave of well over a thousand U.S. sailors that never had a chance to fight back. And parents, if you're going to bring your children, please have them of an older age where they can respect the tranquility and the war grave that they are visiting. Shown in this photo is oil that is still coming up out of the wreck. The USS Arizona is still bleeding from the attack. It is said the Arizona will stop bleeding when the last of her sailors are once again together. Just last year, an organization known as DPAA exists in the world. It's the Department of Missing and Action Killed and Action Accounting Agency. I'm trying to say that more than once a day, it's kind of hard. Their sole purpose in the world is to recover the remains of men, whether or not it's from Afghanistan, Iraq, or if they come home from any conflict America's ever been in. But in the case of the Oklahoma, it was resurrected in 1943, which means the ship was riding. The remains of those 429 men were taken out of the ship. They were taken to Punch Bowl National Cemetery here on the island, and they were all placed in unmarked, unknown graves. In 2011, that organization I just mentioned gonna take all those men out of those unmarked graves and from 2011 to 2021 they were able to identify 388 out of the 429 men that's 70 77 percent of the men that lost their lives aboard the oklahoma were sent home the barber brothers were finally laid to rest in new london wisconsin on 9 11 2021 80 years later for me, this story gives me a lot of peace and hope because it shows that even though it was 80 years later, America's still caring about the men that gave their lives aboard the ships that day. One other story that I have about brothers that I learned just three weeks ago. There are two names on that wall with the last name Murdoch, but the morning of the attack on December 7th, there were three brothers stationed aboard the USS Arizona with the last name Murdoch. Two of them were on board the ship that morning. One of them was on shore. The two that were on the ship lost their lives. The one that was on shore did not. We got to meet the grandson of the man that was on shore. He came from rural Alabama. He was the first person ever in his entire family to be able to afford to come to Hawaii to see that wall and pay respects to his great uncles. I like to share that story sometimes to remind people of the place in which they are in history and remind you that you could be standing next to somebody today that is related to somebody on that wall and whenever you visit a war memorial anywhere you go in the world different countries washington dc or anywhere like that keep the solemnness of the place keep your voices to a minimum i hope you all have a beautiful rest of your time while you're on the island of oahu on behalf of the national park service and the united states navy thank you for coming to pay your respects Hey, thanks for watching that video. We greatly appreciate it. If you ever find yourself in Oahu, I think a visit to Pearl Harbor to remember the history of the fallen men, women, and civilians of Pearl Harbor of December 7th, 1941 is a must. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please mash that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and uh, we'll see you in some more Hawaii videos.